Australia has had three recessions. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I've got my Stein of coffee and I thought we would have a look at this article from the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis in the US looking at the Australian economy and our constant claims of 28 years of growth. Aussie, 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 oi, oi, oi. Because fundamentally, they're looking at it from a GDP per capita perspective and are arguing that, well, no, Australia has actually had three recessions. This is something I've mentioned in previous videos, particularly looking at the economy from the GFC moving forward, where we've been what feels like, what seems like in a depressed economic growth state, where we've been growing below trend. It should be 10% bigger. Now, if you enjoy this type of content, please share it with your friends your neighbors, let them know on social media. We need people to be discussing this and have a, a bit of a more thorough understanding or just question what's being put forward by our political leaders and by the media, because we're just hearing the same old rhetoric again and again. Australia's growing good, it's going good, good, good. And you'll talk to someone and they'll just say, yeah, now nah, we've got liberals, it's all right. When, you know, it's the same from both lots and we need to question and challenge it. People need to, you know, think about these things from a few different perspectives. Maybe I'm just the cynical bastard. So has Australia really had a 28 year expansion? So this is from their blog, Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis. So in July, the US officially entered its longest expansion on record. Natural, naturally, many are wondering if the expansion is sustainable. When asking this question, many turn to the Australian case, as it has been argued that Australia hasn't had a recession in 28 years. But is this really the case? Guys, before we go any more into this, let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think Australia, and I think I'll know the answer, do you think Australia has had 20, 28 years of uninterrupted growth? It depends on the sector that you've been working in. Maybe from the, you're in the bedpan economy now. It's just going gangbusters. You know, you're loving it. You're just raking in the money and you're getting all the bedpans you can take home to impress the girls. But if you're in maybe, you know, the construction sector, you might be starting to feel it. If you're in another game, if you're in the real estate game, you're starting to feel it now too. The figures below show that the growth rate of Australia's GDP with recessions shaded gray. Okay. So re recessions are defined here as two or more consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. Now, this is the Australian real GDP growth rate. 1960s, before my time, 70s, before my time. I remember the 80s. I remember, no, I remember the 90, 1990 recession. I remember that one. That's when we moved from Victoria up to Queensland. All of a sudden, work just dried up in the construction game for my father. So guys, you know, let me know if you've got any, any memory of this one. The beginning of the 80s. That, that was around the... Computer game, computer system crash too, wasn't it? According to this, Australia has not had a recession since 1991 and has been growing since. Well, there you go. When's this too? Oh, yeah, okay. However, when we look at real GDP per capita growth, the story changes. The figure below shows Australia's per capita GDP growth rate. Again, recessions are shaded gray and defined as two or more consecutive quarters of negative growth. And I will write down, I'm going to write down this time and I'll put a title card above to the video where I discussed this, looked at per capita GDP growth rate from the GFC onward. And the reason why they're just starting here, that's when they've got the data. But that's showing you that we have been growing below trend. So the economy has been depressed from the GFC forward. But have a look here. Look at these recessions that we've had. So we've got, you know, the 90s recessions. There we go. There's two there. Then we have another one in 2000, 2005. And then one here. Sorry. At 2000. What is this? Well, now. Pretty much. What do you think about that? It's not surprising. Not surprising when you look at the figures. But it's not really talked about much. No one wants to mention the R words. Politicians don't want to mention the R word. They don't want to say recession. Because a lot of it is to do with public confidence and public perception. America, you know, you still have this this perception that the, there's a boom, that these economy is going well. But if you, you listen to certain commentators and look at a few things, you're starting to see, oh, you know, maybe not. 
Maybe not. As shown in the figure, Australia has had three recessions since 91. When looking at GDP per capita, the most recent one being from the second quarter of 2008, 18, sorry, to the first quarter of 2019. Second quarter of 2018 to the first quarter of 2019. Yeah, I would, I would think so. That makes a lot of sense, actually. When a whole lot of people were saying, yeah, work was dead, it just picked up in the middle of the year. Or after, you know, the beginning of this year was just dead and it's picked up. What do you think? Does that sound, feel right to you? Let, let me know in the comments, guys, if you have, if you've experienced a recession from that period or you've just seen, you know, less demand from your clients, clients putting off projects, people paying you extra, extra long. This discrepancy between the growth rate of per capita GDP and the growth rate of GDP implies that population growth has been a key factor for Australia's economic expansion. A rising population increases the size of the economy and therefore total output increases, which is reflected in the level of GDP. So there's another thing to think about here. A population has increased. Okay, it's increased. And I'm just going to bring up uh, an image here. And I've shown this a few times. This is the Foreign Investment Review Board. Now you've got two things here. The blue is in new housing and the red is in existing housing. And you can see here that foreign investment has driven up. A lot of it's driven up new housing. Now, think about this. If the new housing price is going up, that's gonna influence the cost of associated existing housing as well. Okay, that it's a market, so that it's all going up relative. So you've got one lever here, which is pulling that sector up. Okay, now new housing, excluding land, is included in CPI is included so they're just housing not the land and most of the cost is in the land okay so the land value is going up because there's more demand because they can build more units on there and sell it so there's this portion is getting counted in cpi which isn't a cost of living increase as we've seen before but most people treat it as so existing housing is going up so this huge aspect of our economy is inflating and it's it's driving up driving up the actual cost of living it's driving up inflation which is reducing the wage growth of Australians, which we saw was stagnant, but when you encounter these factors into it, actually is negative. So it's all feeding in. It, it's, it's, I think it's actually a little bit worse than, than people may realize, that people may realize, particularly depending for the younger generation. However, the fact that we do see economic downturns in per capita terms means that population is growing faster than GDP. For nearly 40 years, Australia has had a higher population growth rate than other industrialized economies, as seen in the figure below. So here we go. Here's Australia. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, and we're dropping down. We're below. I think there's New Zealand and the US. And we're uh, shooting up. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. Kiwis are beating us at the moment. Uh, look at that. Look at those jumps in New Zealand. What do we have here? Here's the grey Germany. Oh, I wonder why that's shot up. I wonder why that's shot up. So in particular, it had a surge in population around 2008 during the height of the global financial crisis due to migration. This population growth translated into overall positive GDP growth, but its effect on GDP growth hasn't been enough to prevent recessions in per capita terms. Oh, there you go. There you go. So was it Rudd's magic money all alone? Per capita recessions are not unique to Australia. In the table below, we compare the number of observed recessions when using GDP growth versus per capita GDP growth for several OECD countries. Again, a recession is defined as two or more consecutive quarters of negative growth. So here we go. Australia, real GDP, per capita real GDP episodes. Look at that difference, eight to three, France. 3 to 6, Germany 6 to 7, Japan 4 to 4, New Zealand 4 to 5, United Kingdom 1 to 1, United States 1 to 15, and this is from 47, 47 to 2019, 1 to 15, and in Australia in 81 to 2019, we've got, wow, we've got just as many additional ones, and overall, so average duration 2.4. Average duration is 2.4. Well, 
That's interesting. I mean, the, the problem is the sample range is different for each country. We found that most of these countries had more recessions when we looked at per capita GDP growth versus just GDP growth. This means that GDP is growing, but oftentimes not fast enough to compensate for population growth. As I've said in my other video, the economy has been depressed since the GFC. Since the GFC. For example, although the US has not had a recession since 2009, when we look at per capita GDP growth, the US fell into a brief recession at the beginning of 2012. So should we use Australia as a benchmark when thinking about possible dur uh, duration of expansions? If so, we have to take it with a grain of salt because looking at just GDP growth doesn't paint the whole picture. It is important to look at per capita GDP growth to have a broader view. And another consideration is when you're increasing your population, you have infrastructure burdens, guys. You have infrastructure burdens. And there is a video I did looking at our flooding. No, sorry, not our flooding, our water capacity. And I'm just uh, jumping here to bring that up. Now, in this video, I looked at, I looked at our potable water in Australia. I looked at potable water in Australia and its growth rate relative to our population over time. And I'll just bring it over here. Here it's a, well, New South Wales freshwater scarcity. I looked at that one, but here, Australia's popula population growth outstrips water supply. And I'll bring that up. And uh, again, I keep getting these ads for, for um, aged care. <laughs> I don't know why they're sending that to me, guys. It's, it's YouTube telling me I'm getting old. Is that what it is? But nonetheless, I looked at all of the dams in Australia that, that we had the increased capacity. And most of our water ink growth has come from I think one dam here in Queensland. It was about 1.8% increase in potable water dam storage compared to population growth. And in the same period, we increased 25% in our population. So this is another video I suggest you have a look at if you haven't seen it. Well, guys, thank you very much for joining me for this episode of Heiser Says. If you like the content I'm producing and you want to help me get it out there, please like, share, and subscribe. I also have a Patreon and a subscribe star. You're more than welcome to chuck me a couple of bucks. Everything helps. Even the people who are using my Amazon referral links, it, it all adds up, guys. I really appreciate it. It makes it easier. You know what I mean? Okay, internet bill, taken care of. One less thing to worry about so I can justify to the wife for doing this crazy hobby. Anyway, guys, like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you all later. Take care.